Close your eyes and focus on your breath. When the breath comes in, know it's coming in. When it goes out, know that it's going out. And just stay right there, right where you feel the breath coming in, feel the breath going out. And see if you can make it comfortable. You might decide it's too long, so see if short breathing feels right. If short breathing feels right, then stick with it. If that doesn't solve the problem, you can try maybe longer even than it was before, or deeper or more shallow, heavier or lighter. Play with the breath a little bit, or else just pose that question in the mind, what kind of breathing would feel good right now, and see how the body responds. But the important thing is you stick with it and watch it, so that's the only way you're going to know anything, is by standing still and watching. This is why stillness isn't such an important quality to develop in the mind. And stillness has to come from patience, the ability to put up with whatever is coming along. When the Buddha taught his son meditation, before he started talking about the breath, he talked about teaching the mind to be patient. He said, make your mind like earth. People throw nice things on the earth, people throw ugly things on the earth, disgusting things on the earth, but the earth doesn't react. Or like water, when you use water to wash things away. They may be fragrant things, but the water doesn't get excited, or disgusting things, the water doesn't get upset. When fire burns garbage, it doesn't get upset. When the wind blows disgusting things around, the wind doesn't get upset. He says, try to make your mind like that, so you can really watch things and learn. It's not that you're just going to sit there and accept whatever comes along and not do anything about it. But in order to understand what's actually going, going on, first you have to watch things carefully and see what really needs to be done. Because sometimes what needs to be done is easy and sometimes it's hard. But if you can develop this quality of patience and equanimity, then if it's hard, okay, you're ready to do it. You realize that this is what really needs to be done and you have the strength to do it. So this is why we try to develop stillness in the mind as an important quality. You see things you didn't see before. And at the same time, the goodness of your response, the skillfulness of your response, is a lot more likely. In other words, your goodness doesn't have to depend on things being nice outside. Sometimes if things are very difficult, that's when your goodness really has to show. Like those precepts we took just now, the Buddha doesn't say, I'm not going to kill as long as it's not convenient or as long as I'm feeling comfortable. It's, I'm not going to kill, period. I'm not going to steal, period, regardless of what the situation is, regardless of what people are doing around you. In other words, you want to be able to trust your goodness. That means you have to make sure your goodness doesn't depend on things outside being nice or being the way you want them to be. Even reasonably, sometimes the situation can be really unreasonable, but you've got to say, okay, I'm going to do the skillful thing here regardless. That requires strength of mind. That strength is developed through patience, through equanimity by learning to be still regardless of what happens. And this patience, as I said, is not just necessarily just putting up with whatever goes on. You see something needs to be done, you do it. But your seeing what needs to be done comes from a still point in the mind, a patient point in the mind. So it's going to be a lot more reliable. So try to make your mind like earth. No matter what happens to the earth, it just stays neutral. To make it better than earth, because the earth can't see anything, at least the mind can see. When the mind stays still in it, it can watch things coming and going. It doesn't get things all muddied. It's like the difference between walking past a tree, standing next to the tree, or running past the tree. If you run past the tree, if someone asked you how many leaves were on the tree, you couldn't answer. You probably couldn't answer what kind of tree it was. You just ran right past. It was a blur. But if you stop and stand still, then you're more likely to see, oh, it's this kind of tree, it has this kind of animals. Maybe it has a disease here, maybe it needs to be fixed there. It's when you're still, that's when you can really see what's going on. You're not just reacting to your first impression. And when you can really see what's going on, then it's a lot more likely that you're going to be able to choose a skillful response. So try to develop this quality of stillness. Give the mind something to do where it stays still, like staying with a breath. It doesn't have to move around because it itches here or hurts there. You just stay right there and watch. And you learn a lot of things you wouldn't have learned otherwise. And your goodness becomes based on strength, your goodness becomes a lot more reliable. Because it, it becomes independent of other people's goodness. If your goodness depends on their goodness, the world is going to go to hell. Because everybody's going to be waiting for everybody else to be good. But if your goodness comes from within, okay, then the world the world has some hope. At least the world around you has some hope. And if you can set a good example, it might just start spreading around. Who knows how far the good example will go? So this is why stillness is considered such a virtue in the mind, something we tend to overlook. We tend to be multitasking all the time. Lewis says, well, try just one task for a while, the task of being still, and see what you learn from that. 
There's a lot you learn from stillness that you don't learn from rushing after whatever comes into your range of sight or range of hearing, because it's in stillness that the mind learns and observes.